Time again. Here we go. Thursday morning. God, it's a wet letter today. If I'm sounding a bit horsey, it's because I got a bit of a cold. But it's nearly gone now, I think. So I uh, hope everybody's all right. Staying well, staying safe. At least one thing, we haven't got to cut the grass today. But we'll stay in and read a bit more of the Cornishman, I suppose. So, uh, anyhow, I got uh, three birthdays here today. I got uh, one is from out from America, Travanna Frost Grenfell, a lady from out in America. She was barred last year. And then we got a Phil Harvey, a dear friend of mine, from down the road. Good old Phil, have a nice birthday today. And then, of course, we got Joanne Antawatha. It's her birthday today. So I hope you've got a, a day off today, Joanne. Enjoy your birthday, all three of you. All right. Just take care, of course. And then we got the Gorseth is on Saturday at Padstow. So, and we've got the Salvation Army, 10, to 10, 10 o'clock today till 12. So there we are. Now, I'm going to do a couple of David Prost poems here today. This one's called Ride and I. In my teenage and adolescence, sharing sunny days and scars with others of my energetic youth, my older brother, Owen, had already made his mark on road from Ring of Thimble to Redruth. As a motorcycle speedster, he was often to be glimpsed as a noisy blur of polished chrome and black, and I found reflected glory in the kudos to be gained by riding on the pillion at the back. Sometimes there were three of us, for Smudge, the mongrel dog, would twitch his ears to, and to hear the engine crank, and his eyes would plead in yearning and his stubby tail would wag, so we'd help him up to join us on the tank. As a proven pillion rider, I took pride in sitting still and leaning on the corners as they came. Our smudge had no such training, yet he seemed to know the drill, and, with great panache and style, would do the same. He was never more contented than when sitting like a lord, with his ears thrown back and flapping in the wind, while glancing with derision on his pavement-trodden friends, at whom, I swear, he thumbed his nose and grinned. But one day we were spotted by a member of the force, who straddled Newland Bridge to wave us down. And he slowly ambled over, took his notebook out and said, So tell me, has the circus come to town? Yet this animosity was instantly dispelled by Smudge, who viewed each stranger as a friend, and wagged sincere atonement for whatever human laws his doggy misdemeanours might offend. I shall book you, said the constable, but what would be the point? And he pocketed his notebook with a snort. You cost me hours of pepperwork, and then on top of that, it's not a tale I care to tell in court. Has this dog got a license? Owen looked at him and smiled. Well, no, he said, as Smudge resumed his throne. You can see he loves to ride a motorbike, and he's clever for his age, but I don't think he could ride this one on his own. That's one of David Prowse's, and this other one's called The Prince Among Men. For a dog, he was old. It was no great surprise, for the years take us all in the end, and tomorrow will dawn without obvious change by the loss of a family friend. So why all the tears and the sting and remorse that you vainly attempt to control? Because when he gave what he what he gave lent a rhythm to life in tune with your body and soul. He was part of your being, the best of your heart, a spark in the warmth of a smile. He fostered the softness you thought you could hide in his childish but secretive style. He moulded your manners to match his routine, yet offered far more than he took. He adopted your language until, with a glance, he could read you like a reading a book. And now that it's over, you mop, you mop like a babe and grope for the words to explain how something so lacking in human finesse could cause such illogical pain. Yet, did you know it? Yet you, but not, but know it, you added your name to a ledger of endless time, where the biggest and strongest, the bravest of men, are featured in line after line. And if any should scoff at the eye, the catch in your voice, or the glint of a tear in your eye, regard them with pity and smile on the stars for the feelings their senses deny. Be proud to remember as long as you live, that soulmate who, who never complained. He guarded your children, he took you for walks, and only reneged when it rained. He saw you as perfect, a prince amongst men, a hero to love and adore. And all these things were the man you became the minute you walked through the door. Now the house is as silent as yesterday's prayers, yet here in the gloom of the day, with that magical instinct he always possessed, he's only a whisper away. Have a nice weekend.